Hi there, and welcome to the screencast on units. This is one screencast in a series of screencasts in IB Physics. The core curriculum, this is topic one, which is about physics and physical measurement. So let's get started with units. We're going to talk about the fundamental units, or sometimes called base units, derived units, symmetric prefixes, and we'll learn about dimensional analysis. So the SI system of units, SI stands for Sistema Internationale. It uh, is a agreed system of units so that it can be common all over the world. There are seven fundamental or base units in this SI system. They are the units that are most clearly defined and measurable. Right? Other units are derived from them. Now you need to know which units are fundamental. So you have to memorize the seven fundamental units. You don't need to know how they're defined, however. For example, the meter is defined as the distance light travels in a vacuum in this fraction of a second. You might be thinking, okay, that's nice, but why not just make the meter length of a particular stick? Well, that could change over time. All right, this stick can get banged up, it could warp you know, with moisture, etc. So in this case, the, this distance that light travels in a vacuum is, is never going to change as far as we know. The second is also a fundamental unit. The ampere, Kelvin for temperature. The mole is a fundamental unit. And the candela, which is kind of a strange unit. We won't see it in IV really, but it is a standard unit of light intensity. And the kilogram. In this case, the kilogram is a particular kilogram that's stored under uh, various uh, pieces of glass and under a vacuum in France. So here they are in a table. These are the seven fundamental units. You can fi find these anywhere on the internet or in your textbook. Notice that Newton is not a fundamental unit. Neither is a Coulomb, the unit of charge. Right? Newton's a unit of force. Coulomb's unit of charge. These are not fundamental units. These are derived units. So what are derived units? They're made from the fundamental units. For example, you can have speed or velocity, which is distance over time. It's made from a meters in a second. Now, meters in a second are each fundamental units. So in this case, speed is meters per second. Acceleration is the same, meters per second squared. Force is mass times acceleration, which is a kilogram meter per second squared. So you could write all that, and it could be an acceleration. right? That's going to be a derived unit called a Newton. And at this point, we'll take a moment just to mention that. I mean, you may have seen meters per second written like this here, but in IB land, it's it's typically written this way, with uh, rather than a slash. The it's written with an exponent, negative exponent. So some other derived units here: a joule and a watt. Okay, metric prefixes. So these you should have seen, first seen long ago, perhaps in middle school. So for example, here's your standard down here, starting with milli, centi, deci, deca, hecto, kilo. These are standard metric prefixes that you might have learned long ago. But they do extend beyond and smaller than milli and larger than mega. For example, here's giga and tera. If you're familiar with you know, computers, you might have heard something called a gigabyte or even a terabyte. Here's a micro, like a micrometer, which is one millionth of a meter. Nano, nanotechnology. Okay, these are given to you in your physics, IB Physics data book. So you don't have to necessarily memorize these, but it does make things faster if you keep them in your head. At least pocket that away somewhere. Some examples. Let's see if you can do these conversions. So if you want to pause your video now, go ahead and do so and work these out. Okay, so here's the examples. 2,000 kilograms, right, that's 2 million grams. 3 tenths of a milliamp in scientific notation. 3 times 10 to the minus fourth. 545 nanometers in scientific notation there. And 2.34 megawatts. Mega is a million. Okay, let's talk about dimensional analysis. What is that? Well, it's a way to test your, your answers to see if they're, they make sense, right? So an example is if you have, right, we asked what's the airspeed of an unladen swallow? 
Well, say you do a calculation and you'd get this. What do you think? Well, this is a problem, right? This is supposed to be, we've asked for uh, a speed and you've come up with a unit of a distance. So you should immediately suspect you did something wrong here. So dimensional analysis can be a way of confirming or suspecting uh, an answer. Let's try another one here. So we want to deduce that the units for the period of a pendulum is time. And we're given that the period of the pendulum is this equation right here. So period is 2 pi times the square root of L over G, where L is in the length in meters and G is gravitational acceleration in meters per second squared. So if you work this out, what kind of units do you get out here? Well, length is in meters. G is in meters per second squared. So if we plug those in, right? notice the meters cancel. We're left with s or seconds to the minus 2 or negative 2 in the denominator here, which is the same as seconds to the positive 2 or seconds squared in the numerator. And if we take the square root, that effectively undoes the square. And we're left with just the unit of seconds. So indeed, we just confirmed that this works out so that the this answer is in seconds. Okay, that's it for this screencast on units. Bye.